Well, here we are, just days away from the final Super Smash Bros. Ultimate character reveal. It's been quite the journey from when we first got Ultimate announced, and I've had an absolute blast speculating characters with everyone. But all good things must come to an end. So this will be my last Super Smash Bros. Ultimate character speculation video. Now that doesn't mean this will be my last video. But barring some major leak or something in the next couple days, this will be the last video I do before Smash Speculation ends, and we get our final character revealed. I still plan to do a Smash Ultimate Speculation ending video after the character is revealed, wrapping everything up, but at that point there likely won't be anything left to speculate about for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate characters. Maybe spirit events will continue for a bit, and maybe at some point I can make a video on what a hypothetical future Smash game might look like, and try to predict when the series could return or something. So there will still be plenty of Smash content on this channel, maybe I'll finally get around to making hypothetical character moveset videos for fun. Smash Amiibos will still come out into next year, so we'll have that to talk about too. And I could make videos looking back on old leaks and theories and how things panned out in the end, from like a historical documenting what happened kind of perspective. But actually speculating which characters, who we could get in Smash Ultimate, will be coming to a close on the 5th. There of course will be other non-Smash things to make videos about in this channel. Speculating potential characters that could get in other games, like Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, whose DLC cycle conveniently begins right when Ultimates ends. Or speculating other Nintendo rumors and stuff, like when we could get a Nintendo Direct, or what we could see in some other game that I'm interested in, like Breath of the Wild 2 for example. And without having to constantly be on top of Smash speculation and keep up with it and everything, that will open up a lot of free time for me to do other things, like potentially game reviews and retrospectives, more fun gameplay videos, doing things like potential top 10 lists for video games and things I like, or streaming regularly. And I'll talk more in that wrap-up video after the final character about the future of this channel. Actually, I say this will be my final Smash character speculation video I make before the reveal, but I will probably stream a prediction video or two in the next few days. I've really enjoyed live streaming like Nintendo Directs and character reveals, and I think interacting directly with the Smash community will be the way to go from here on out until the reveal. Videos like this one take time to plan out and edit together, and I simply cannot mention every possible character we might see on Tuesday. I'm only going to cover what new speculation has popped up in this video. But that doesn't mean speculation I talked about a month ago, or even eight months ago, for some character isn't still on the table. I just simply can't recover everything I've said in this video again. But if I do some streaming over the next couple days, and having like a live chat to interact with, and people to just bounce characters and smash speculation off me with, I will be able to go over far more possible characters, so from here on out, that will likely be the smash speculation content before the reveal on this channel. And maybe that will lead into more regular streaming after the characters revealed, because I've always kind of wanted to do that. Also, I want to say right up front, at this moment, I do not know who the character is. I have no idea what we might see on Tuesday. Whether it's exciting or disappointing, I don't know. However, I do see a large part of the internet clamoring for everyone to temper expectations. A huge amount of fear of disappointment has gripped over the Smash community lately. And I get it. I do. We don't want to be disappointed. Especially not at the very end for a game that by all measures has blown our expectations out of the water years ago. I think every Smash fan out there can point to a moment during all of this Smash Ultimate stuff that absolutely floored them and made Smash Ultimate something truly special. However this game ends, I think we all have a memory of a moment during all of this that was truly special, and we can always look back on Smash Ultimate with fondness for those moments. But if we don't get who we want at the end, or rather if who we get at the end isn't among the objectively high points of Smash Ultimate, we are all fearing leaving this game with a sour taste in our mouth, despite the fondness it clearly deserves with all the incredible hype moments it's had. I get that. I get the fear here. But I also really want people to think about and recognize living in fear of disappointment right now, you will miss out on the last time, for a very long time, you can be hyped and excited for a Smash character reveal. There's a good chance you won't get precisely who you want on the 5th. Maybe it won't even be one of the high points of Smash Ultimate. But this is also the last time it could be. We are likely looking at years of waiting, 
waiting for another Smash game to be announced, only to be met with nothing for a long time. That will be years of disappointment. These next few days are your last chance to get excited, to get hyped for Super Smash Bros. So obviously, the choice is completely up to you. Heed the internet's warnings, temper your expectations, and save yourself from a possibly disappointing moment at the end. Or, enjoy the ride, get hyped these last few days, dream about a miracle ending, maybe not exactly who you want, but hopefully someone really amazing and memorable ends this whole thing, hope that Sakurai and Nintendo deliver us a strong finale, and we have one more amazing moment from Smash Ultimate before it all ends. Maybe Tuesday will be disappointing. But disappointment fades. Some of my fondest Smash Ultimate memories aren't even who we ended up getting, but rather the fun I had speculating and dreaming about who we could get. And these next few days, if you aren't too afraid to allow yourself to be excited, are the last chance to create more of those memories. Personally, I'll be enjoying these next few days. Like I said, the disappointing moments fade, but the amazing moments stick with us. And I'd rather get excited for a final amazing moment than live in fear. So it's entirely up to you if you want to shield yourself from disappointment, but if you need to hear it, you have my permission to cast off the cynicism and enjoy the innocent excitement that's left in the unknown while we still have something unknown for these next few days. Again, I don't know who the final fighter is, whether they are really hype or really disappointing or somewhere in between whether they'll be first party or third party, but our final big potential leak right now is for Sora. No idea if that leak is real or if that leak is totally fake. And whether it ends up being someone as hype as Sora or someone not even close, I'm going to take some advice from Kingdom Hearts and enjoy the final few days of Smash speculation. Because regardless of warnings, the future doesn't scare me at all. Okay, so let's jump into this. We just passed the one year anniversary of Steve from Minecraft being revealed for Smash on October 1st, 2020. Objectively speaking, that might have been the craziest moment in all of Smash Ultimate so far. Steve broke Twitter after all. And now we have a new character reveal announced for October 5th. The final Mr. Sakurai Presents for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Tune in 10 5, 7 a.m. PT, and 10 a.m. ET. In the UK, they're calling this one the final battle, which is kind of interesting. Nintendo of America's Twitter said, Tune in on 10.5 at 7 a.m. PT for the reveal presentation of the final Super Hashtag Smash Bros. Ultimate DLC fighter with director Masahiro Sakurai. The fighter's release date and final Mii Fighter costumes will also be revealed. So if you had any hope for future Mii Fighter waves outside of the Fighter Pass, the Mii Fighters will also be ending here. The YouTube description for the video mentions it will be 40 minutes long, so a good long Sakurai Presents. Plenty of time to reveal the fighter, explain how they play, and give Smash Ultimate a proper send-off. October 5th is of course the same day as the release of Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. While some people seem to think this was done on purpose to take attention and sales away from Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, I think this is a total coincidence myself. Likely the October 5th date was planned many months ago for both of these games and they just happen to be coinciding. I don't see anyone saying the Smash reveal was done to take attention away from the release of the new Super Monkey Ball game, for instance. And maybe Super Monkey Ball characters are Smash rep, I don't know. And of course, this final Sakurai Presents was announced during our September Nintendo Direct. So before I get into character-specific speculation, let's talk a bit about that Direct, because I never really got a chance to. Right before the Direct, Alpha Rad and Maximilian, two YouTubers claim they knew who the final Smash character is. But I think they were just joking around, especially considering how we didn't get a character reveal in that Direct. But hey, maybe they do know who it is. I haven't followed up on this and like looked into it after they first posted that, so I don't know if they ever denounced these tweets as just a joke or what, but either way, I suspect they were just joking around here before the Direct. The Direct opened with a cinematic, which ended up being for Monster Hunter DLC, but I truly at first believed it could have been a Smash reveal for a Monster Hunter character, but oh well. Alright, so in the Direct itself, we actually got a few things that relate to possible leaks. Mario Golf revealed Ninji, a Mario character that rarely gets any attention. We have a Mario Golf leak that had Ninji on it. I actually mentioned this Mario Golf leak a while back when Toadette was announced. Now we also got Koopa Troopa who is not on this leak, but everything else has been lining up for it. And again, Ninji is a difficult character to guess. So maybe the leak is legit, but Koopa Troopa was like a late addition or something. I don't know. But it's an interesting leak to keep an eye on for Mario Golf fans for sure. 
Another leak that gained some credibility during the Direct was the big NVIDIA leak. Basically, some people online realized that unlocking GeForce gave them access to a huge database for testing. This revealed a huge list of unreleased games potentially coming to PC. Now, NVIDIA has claimed the list is real, but it's speculative which makes some sense as a lot of the unreleased games on that list are simply sequels to beloved series. Games that we all basically assume at some point will get another entry. So like if a game is on whatever the game's called 4, this list has whatever the game's called 5. But there's also plenty of specific and interesting stuff on there as well. I won't list all of it here, but you can easily Google up the list and see for yourself. Despite saying the list is speculative, Ubisoft issued a takedown request, which only makes the list seem more legitimate than speculative. Whether some of the games on the list are truly just speculative, some of the games have been coming true, including the new Act Razor Renaissance game that was revealed during the September Direct. So keep an eye on that NVIDIA leak list. Lots of cool potential stuff on there, and it mentions Chrono Cross, which I'd be ecstatic if we got something from that game. Now another game we saw in the September Direct, Bayonetta 3, was also on this NVIDIA list, which could mean it might be coming to PC. However, Kamiya seems to be very clear that Bayo 3 only has plans to show up on Switch right now, and suggests, if you want to play it, to go buy a Switch. There's also a lot of speculation about Bayonetta 3, lots of stuff involving alternate timelines and how the Bayonetta we saw in the trailer might not actually be her, and thus that's why the new voice is there. And some other really crazy theories, I'm just a casual Bayonetta fan at best, so I won't delve into all of that, but there's some cool theories out there worth looking into if you want to check it out. Lots of other games got highlighted. Honestly, overall, I thought it was a very strong Direct. We got two more boards shown off for Mario Party Superstars, Yoshi's Tropical Island, and Horrorland. These are two of my favorite boards from the 64 games, actually, so I was very happy to see them on here. We have two boards for Mario Party 1, two boards for Mario Party 2, and only one board for Mario Party 3. So maybe the unlockable board for Mario Party 3 will be an unlockable board in Superstars, to even things out, have two boards from every game. That board would probably be Waluigi's Island, since that's the unlockable board in Mario Party 3. We got a look at Kirby and the Forgotten Land, a true 3D Kirby adventure, and it looks awesome. Seems to be a focus on Waddle Dees this time around, you're kind of just saving them it looks like. I had personally thought the September Direct would be the last Nintendo presentation for a while, but beyond just the Sakurai Presents for Smash happening on the 5th, we also got an Animal Crossing Direct announced, so I'm looking forward to that later this month. Also later this month, we'll get news on the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack, which will be adding N64 and Sega Genesis games to the Switch Online. I'm super excited for that one. We got a look at the full game library these consoles will start with, which is slightly different in Japan, but you can always make a Japanese account on your Switch and access those games if you want to. Also, Sin and Punishment finally has an official Western N64 box. Well, kinda, I mean it won't really have a box, but they made a mock-up one here. So we can see what that would've looked like. And we got a look at future titles they'll add to the service. Among them was Banjo-Kazooie, a Rare game, which it's always been questionable if Rare would end up on any of the re-released N64 stuff Nintendo ever does, since Rare is owned by Microsoft now. According to Zippo, more Rare stuff will also head to the Switch Online eventually. Considering Nintendo and Microsoft's good relationship these days, I suspect that will be the case. Rare games are among some of the best titles on the N64, so I'm very happy to see Banjo-Kazooie here. We also got a look at two controllers for this service. They seem to be exactly like their original versions, beyond a few additional buttons to just, you know, work how the Switch does. I'm really curious to see how that N64 joystick feels, though, and if they've hopefully updated it. I imagine they must have, because the old N64 joysticks break pretty quickly. And then, of course, the really shocking surprise during this Direct was getting news about the Mario movie. It's coming to theaters holiday 2022, specifically December 21st in the US. But the part everyone is going crazy over is the casting, which seems... bizarre. I'm not gonna lie, the casting felt like a fever dream as it was being announced, and I legitimately thought it might have been a joke initially. It seemed to be the Mario movie meme come to life as they announced Hollywood celebrity after Hollywood celebrity, some seemingly randomly chosen for the characters they'll be playing. Especially Chris Pratt as Mario. I guess we were warned. And some people even predicted some of this, though I assume they were actually joking when they did so. So now there's plenty of jokes from all of this. Basically, take a random actor and a random Mario character, stick them together, and there you go, perfect casting. 
You can literally trick people who aren't aware of the real casting by simply adding one of these fake ones to the list, and among all of them, it looks just as bizarre. No one can spot the fake. Trust me, I've tried it on people. It works. They're all so surreal, picking out which one isn't actually real is near impossible. Anyway, I've warmed up somewhat to the casting, and it's not so much I don't like these actors, but rather I'm unsure how I feel about hearing most of their voices from the Mario cast. But I'll withhold judgment till I actually see this and hear this in action. And most of these actors do have some voice acting experience. Some of them have even impressed me with their voice acting before. For instance, Jack Black voiced Slappy in the Goosebumps movie, and I didn't even notice until the credits. So I'm pretty confident at least he'll probably be able to deliver a good Bowser voice if he can find one. Personally, though, I think the right way to do a Mario movie, an animated Mario movie, would have been to make it mostly silent with visual humor and storytelling like an old-school slapstick cartoon for the most part, staying true to the characters in-game. And telling the story visually would have been very Mario RPG style, and obviously I'm a fan of that. But alas, the days when you could take a big brand name like Mario and get a studio to take an artistic risk, like not having much voicing behind it, are probably behind us these days. So here we are, a animated Mario movie with a huge Hollywood cast. And I am somewhat happy to see who will appear in this movie as in which Mario characters are appearing in the movie. We have Kamek, Cranky Kong, Foreman Spike, all characters I assume will be part of the origin story of Mario. Nintendo tends to shy away from that. Even if we all have like a vague headcanon for the origins of Mario, something with like Bowser being raised by Kamek, Mario and Luigi being plumbers or handymen who probably dealt with Donkey Kong in Brooklyn, or maybe they'll change that to New Donk City now, and eventually they find their way to the Mushroom Kingdom, possibly through like a magic warp pipe. So I'm excited to see if we get a current, updated, canon origin story for the Mario world potentially put on screen once and for all. Also, some of the symbols they use to represent the characters these actors would be playing are symbols straight out of Mario Kart. And some of the characters here aren't actually in Mario Kart, so maybe that's a hint towards something in the future. Charles Martinet apparently will voice surprise cameos. Maybe they'll just be some throwaway sidelines from some random character. Or maybe they'll end the movie off introducing Wario and Waluigi, or something like that. Martinet could voice both of those characters. He has voiced Wario more fully than any other character before, as in he has actually spoken lots of full sentences as Wario, and not just quick one-liners and catchphrases like he does for most of the other characters. And ending off with some cliffhanger introducing Wario would honestly be pretty great. And then the last thing I want to say about the Mario movie casting, I honestly think they might have looked at the Lego movie for this one. A lot of our actors, including Chris Pratt as the lead, are straight out of the Lego movie. And that actually makes some sense to me. Lego is a beloved, wholesome, family-friendly company, but isn't known for movies. Very similar to Nintendo in that regard. Lego successfully pulled off a movie, and it was well received. I could see Nintendo wanting to mirror that same transition, and might have used the Lego movie as a guideline. Whether that's how they got the idea to use some of these voice actors or not, I don't know, and probably not directly, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Lego movie was brought up in discussions in length while figuring out how to do a Mario movie. Final note on Lego, this mini Mario 64 set looks amazing. Too expensive for me to drop that kind of cash on for a Lego, but if they made a bunch of mini versions of the N64 Mario levels like they did here, I'd be all about collecting those. All right, so sorry about spending so much time going over the direct in such detail. Let's move on to actual Smash speculation now. And hey, for people wondering what the channel could be like after Smash speculation, there you go, that was general Nintendo speculation stuff. Future Nintendo speculation content will probably look a lot like what I just did. Okay, so the big leak right now, or rather potential leak, in the 11th hour, our final possible leak to discuss before the end of Smash speculation, is this Kingdom Hearts music leak for Sora. And even in that Nintendo Direct, some people got faked out a bit when Mickey Mouse showed up and they had that letter appear in front of him. Besides the fact we were told the reveal would be October 5th, that moment did look rather Smash Bros, and I have seen some people reacting as if it was a Smash reveal for Sora. That game, Disney Magical World 2, is actually being developed by Bandai Namco and published by Nintendo, the same companies behind Smash. Also, have you seen Bandai's terrible new logo? 
I don't know what they're thinking, but but anyway, I'm digressing here. I'm actually a big fan of Mickey Mouse as a video game character. Castle of Illusion was one of my favorite games as a kid. So if Disney stuff did get into Smash at the end, I'd be happy that part of my personal gaming history, the part of my childhood when I was playing Mickey Mouse video games, was represented in Smash. Alright, anyway, Mickey Mouse himself aside, I went over the Kingdom Hearts music leak for Sora in this video. And I'm not going to repeat everything I said there. So go watch that video if you haven't already. I'm going to mostly focus on new stuff about it in this video. So the leak itself is this. Over on 4chan, months ago, back on July 30th, someone anonymously posted, Actual info here. I work for Disney Music. Nintendo called last week to request rights to several tracks from Kingdom Hearts to use in a digital event on October 5th. Sora is the last Smash character. So that one predicted the exact date, October 5th, for our Smash character presentation. And they referred to it as a digital event. And that's likely a term that would be used when contracting music in this manner. And that's it. There's not much more to this one. It's a very short and simple potential leak. Though historically, real 4chan leaks have been short and simple, haven't gotten much attention, and neither did this post. No one seemed to pay it any mind until months later, our Smash presentation date was announced, and it did turn out to be October 5th. Now this of course could be a case of monkeys on typewriters. Basically so many people make fake leaks and predict dates that someone was bound to get it right eventually. However, usually people predict specific dates only like a week or so in advance when trying to guess like a Nintendo Direct or something. I honestly didn't see many Smash fake leaks or predictions with random specific fall dates back in July. No one was really predicting October 12th, or November 16th, or October 21st. I didn't see that all summer. And usually these fake leaks don't have such plausible stories attached to them for how they got their information. And I didn't see as much guessing going on back in July at all. To be honest, Smash speculation was kind of at a lull all summer. Plus, it seemed most people assumed either a Nintendo Direct in September, or much later, like December during the Game Awards, would be when the Smash Fighter would be announced. Very few people were actually guessing October. Speaking of the Game Awards, it's been confirmed it's happening December 9th this year. So real or fake, this one certainly stands out. It seems plausible. Nothing is certain in either direction, of course, but it's a plausible potential leak for Sora. And honestly, I think it's pretty cool we have a potential leak to chew on and talk about before we get this final character reveal. Now, some more digging has been done, and this one actually goes a little bit deeper than just that simple post. You see, this post actually isn't the first time a Sora on October 5th prediction was made. Several hours earlier, that same day back on July 30th, this post is the first post to claim Sora's happening on October 5th. And it simply reads, It's Sora... It will drop on October 5th. It got no replies, no attention, and then hours later we got the other post with the full Disney music story attached to it. And then shortly after that post got no attention again either, the same Disney music post was reposted word for word. And once again, it got no replies. Now it is impossible to say whether this is all the same person or not, but considering it all happened on the same day and got no attention, my guess is things probably went down like this. Someone on July 30th posted a Sora leak for October 5th. Then after getting no attention, returned and posted it again, but with a bit more information about where this leak was coming from. Real or fake, they added more information. Then copy and pasted their second post again, once more, and after posting it again, they gave up after that third post, once again got no attention. Okay, so three posts for Sora October 5th happened on July 30th. Then, a few months go by, no one else predicts anything close to that, and another post pops up a day before the September Nintendo Direct. So this was posted on the 22nd, again a day before that September Direct, and it says, It's Sora. I work for Disney Music. Nintendo paid a heft sum for some music from Kingdom Hearts for a streaming event in September. It's 100% Sora for Smash Brothers. So very similar to those posts back from July 30th. It's months later, and someone posts a very similar story for the same character. However, here, the very specific October 5th date has been changed to just September. Alright, so the knee-jerk reaction to the September post is that it's all fake now, right? They changed their story and got it wrong, so it's over. Well, not really when you think more about what could be happening. First off, 4chan is anonymous, so there's actually no way to know for sure if any of these posts are from the same person. But let's talk about the possibilities for that. 
it's very likely they are all from the same person, given that none of the posts got any attention until after we got the October 5th presentation announced, I don't see more than one person being behind these. Definitely back on July 30th, more than a single person posting Sora October 5th leaks all on the same day by pure coincidence seems insanely unlikely. It's got to be the same person. And at the very least, the two literal copied and pasted posts that give the full Disney music story almost have to be from the same person. Again, keep in mind, they got no replies. Who would copy and paste someone else's fake leak that got no attention? Okay, so the three posts on July 30th are almost certainly from the same person. Now, this post right before the September Direct has the same Disney music leak story as the post from months earlier. And again, they got no replies, no attention. So I don't think it's very likely a copycat showed up or someone came up with the same story. The September post is probably the same person from July 30th returning. However, this incorrect September post happening, I don't think debunks the original leak at all. Let's talk about what could be happening for it. Okay, so just to go down the rabbit hole, benefit of the doubt, let's say it's real. This all actually makes some sense. This person works for Disney Music, they hear about Nintendo asking for Kingdom Hearts music at the end of July. Around the time frame, Sakurai is likely filming or planning out the final presentation. This person hears it's for a digital event on October 5th. And so they go to 4chan and post anonymously that Sora is happening October 5th. No one responds, so then hours later they decide to get a little riskier and give some background info for where this is coming from in hopes people might actually pay some attention to it. So they add the Disney music portion. They post the full Disney music story twice, but it still gets no replies. But whatever, once it happens, people will see it was predicted, and that's that. Well then fast forward to late September. A few months go by with no one talking about Sora, Disney music, October 5th stuff, and we end up in late September, and Nintendo announces their direct for September 23rd. This person who works for Disney Music sees this direct announcement and worries maybe Nintendo changed the date. Maybe dates for digital events can change internally with Nintendo. Maybe this Disney Music employee isn't very deeply involved in the contract. Maybe it even changed back then. They're just not sure about it. All of a sudden they have the September Direct and it doesn't fit with what they heard before. They might not know if things have changed from whatever they heard back in July about the Kingdom Hearts music deal. Maybe they even forgot the specific date of October 5th at that point and just recalled Kingdom Hearts music was acquired for something happening in the fall with Nintendo and they were pretty sure that would be Sora being revealed for Smash. Okay, so they jump back on 4chan and wanting to make sure a correct Sora prediction post exists at all, they write the same leak info but say September to fit with the new Direct that was just announced. They are assuming that's where Sora is going to be revealed now. Also keep in mind, Smash characters sometimes get revealed in directs, and then a Sakurai Presents happens a bit later. So if they did post a new Sora September prediction, and Sora got revealed in the direct and not on October 5th, when maybe that's when the presentation was happening, then no one would have noticed their October 5th predictions before, they would seem off. So they almost had to come back and predict Sora in case Sora was revealed in the direct. So while the September prediction post is now clearly wrong in hindsight, I actually think there's some very plausible, logical reasons why this person might have posted it even if the leak was real. It doesn't dismiss the October 5th leak at all to me. It just adds more mystery to it a bit. Once again, we can't be absolutely sure it's the same person, but it likely is the same person. And I actually think there's a very plausible reason why they'd post it right before the Direct. They got worried Sora would be revealed there, that the date that they had before might have changed or something, and returned to post their leak again, now updated just to say September. Honestly, if you think about the alternative, if this one is a fake leaker, what would be the point of coming back months later and sticking to the same story? What would the point of that even be? Why not change it completely, especially the night before the direct? Why keep to that story? If you're faking a leak anyway and hopes your post will get noticed, why not write a new story? Sticking to the old story only adds the possibility of people discovering those old posts which specified October 5th, and then casting doubt on your new leak being real at all, even if by chance Sora did get revealed. Basically, not only do I think the September post doesn't disprove the original leak, I actually think it makes more sense only in the context of the leak being legit. When I try and paint a story with 
all of these posts where the person is faking a leak, it actually makes less sense than if they have real info and we're just trying to get that information out there. If it's fake, it's someone spamming a fake leak three times on July 30th, then doing nothing with their fake leak for months, only to return randomly with the same story the night before the direct, but changing it slightly, which kind of throws the whole thing out anyway. So while I think the story of the leak being real makes more sense with these posts than someone faking a leak, they're doing a terrible job with a fake leak, I feel like, with these posts, it doesn't mean this leak is real. It's basically in the same unknown spot as it's always been but I honestly can't make much sense out of a fake leaker's posting habits while I can't actually make a decent story with all these posts if I pretend it came from a real leaker. Trying to put yourself in the shoes of either one of those possibilities, I think the perspective of this happening from a real leaker makes more sense. So our possibilities here are, is this multiple people piggybacking a leak that got no attention? Is it an incredibly lucky fake leaker who randomly returned to their fake leak right before the direct and changed it a bit? Or is it a real leaker who tried to get some information out there and then got scared by the September Direct and thought maybe Sora would be revealed there and came back and tried to correct the date? I'll leave it up to you to decide what you think is going on with this September post, but I think this leak sits in the plausibly real category. So let's keep going with it. Now there is someone on Twitter who claims they're the one who posted this leak. They say they chose October 5th to go with Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, as they thought it would be funny if the dates lined up. Well, a few sites did list Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl as being released October 5th back on July 30th. It wasn't officially announced, and it wasn't very widespread at that point. However, the real issue with this person claiming they posted the leak is that they have absolutely no proof of posting the leak. Their story doesn't explain at all where they came up with the idea of saying they're from Disney Music, and when I questioned their story, Ace Attorney style, they didn't even seem aware of all the posts made with the Sora, October 5th, and Disney Music stuff on July 30th. They claim they only did one post, which doesn't make much sense if there's three posts about it happening on July 30th alone. They also said maybe some friends they told about their leak might have been the ones who made the other posts, but keep in mind this leak got no attention. Maybe I'm just not the type to post fake leaks, but do people actually tell their friends about a fake leak they posted, especially one that got zero replies? And would that friend then go post their own version of it? I'm doubtful. They were also completely unaware of the Disney Music Leak post that changed the date to just September on September 22nd. And when I brought that up to them, they were happy the leak was proved fake. But of course, the September post could only be seen as potentially debunking the leak if it was posted by the original poster, coming back and changing their story. And if this person is claiming to be that person, obviously they weren't the one who came back and changed it in September. So why would they even think for a second that the September post now debunks it if they're saying they did it? So personally, this person's story doesn't add up at all to me. Generally, I wouldn't even cover something with no proof and a shaky story as anyone could come out and claim this, but I figured if I didn't mention it here, I'd probably be hearing about it in the comments. Make up your own mind if you think this person is the true origin of the Sora Disney music leak, but I'm not convinced at all. Doubting people and the messy side of Smash speculation about who lied and who was being honest and all that is something I'll be very happy to leave behind after the fifth. I don't like dealing with that stuff. Now let's talk about the Disney music part of this possible leak. As it turns out, the Kingdom Hearts music is owned by Disney Music, specifically Walt Disney Records, which is a subsidiary of Disney Music. In fact, Sora is really a Disney rep and not a Square rep, despite the Kingdom Hearts games being Square games. The character is in fact Disney owned. So Sephiroth would technically be our lone Square rep in Pass 2 if we did end on Sora. Sora would be Disney. So while I'm sure Square and Nomura would likely be involved to some extent out of courtesy from Sakurai, he'd probably tell them about getting Sora and Smash, the character negotiations would be completely on the Disney side of things. Now I mentioned this in my last video, but some people question why the music negotiations would happen as late as July. People seem to assume the music rights would be much earlier for a character, and we know all of the fighters for Pass 2 were decided quite a long time ago. Sakurai isn't negotiating for characters one by one, so if he got the character way back over a year ago, he'd probably also secure the rights to the music. However, that's just the music that would come with the fighter in Smash Ultimate itself. What this leak seems to be talking about is the music involved in the digital event on October 5th, as in the music that would happen during Sakurai's presentation. 
Again, late July makes sense for when they'd be planning out and probably soon to be filming and editing Sakurai's presentation for this final fighter. And the truth about these negotiations is, they would have to get separate permission and negotiations when using the music in the presentation. That's a whole other thing, separate from getting the rights to use it in Smash. So the leak's actually very on point with its time frame, and the story lines up with how negotiations for music really would work. Also, sometimes the music that plays during presentations or reveal trailers is different than the music we get in Smash. Heroes was a different music track than we actually got in Smash, for example. Now, I've seen some people suggest maybe it's a real leak, but the music negotiations is for a me costume for Sora, and the music is just to be played when the me costume is revealed, not a playable character. As they do play music that often isn't in Smash at all, and use it simply for the me costume reveals. While we have gotten some big characters as me costumes, I honestly can't imagine Sakurai and Nintendo getting the rights to Sora going to Disney and only having him as a me. Maybe they will play Kingdom Hearts music for the Miis for other Kingdom Hearts characters like Riku or something, but I'd say if Sora is in Smash in any form, he'll be playable. But hey, maybe I'm wrong and we're getting Mickey Mouse. There is this Neku Rindo leak that mentions Kingdom Hearts music, actually. And as a huge The World Ends With You fan, I'd be ecstatic if the final fighter was actually Neku. But I really doubt this one's legit, despite it lining up with the Kingdom Hearts music leak, since it says Kingdom Hearts music would show up with Neku. In my opinion, if Kingdom Hearts music shows up in Smash, Sora will be there along with it. And I'll just be happy if Sora shows up and kind of links The World Ends With You to Smash. Honestly, the really cool thing if Sora happened is that he's from a giant crossover gaming franchise, possibly only rivaled by Smash and maybe Fortnite now. So Smash x Kingdom Hearts would be two crossover giants merging in the end. Sora would certainly be an epic final character from that perspective. All right, so outside of this possible Disney music leak, is there any other reason to think we could end on Sora? Well, a few oddities are out there, so get your tinfoil hats ready and let's talk about them. I mentioned this last video and it's really not too crazy, but when Hero got revealed, it was very World of Light themed with all the characters being like possessed and stuff like that. Then when we got Sephiroth, he killed Gleam and it continued that World of Light thematic. Now I know I said Sora is a Disney character, but he is from a Square game series. So with the last two Square characters relating to the World of Light storyline, maybe it will end with Sora defeating Darkon. It would be a great way to end Smash Ultimate in a CGI trailer, adding Sora, and he ends the World of Light theme we've had going on. All right, so now for the more tinfoil hat stuff. Way back in 2019, Harada, the director of the Tekken series, tweeted this out and tagged a bunch of four Smash character accounts. Now, I'm sure the tweet Harada made is partly in jest and partly because Harada really was sick of getting spammed with character requests. However, recently the Sora for Smash account has been unblocked by Harada. This was noticed by the account in June of this year, right after Kazuya got revealed. So who knows if the other four Smash character accounts got unblocked as well. I haven't heard any of them say that, but Harada and Sakurai are very close and have been hanging out a lot lately. We know that from the Harada bar videos. Maybe Harada talked to Sakurai and found out Sora was the final fighter for Smash, and unblocked the Sora account specifically. I know that one's a bit tinfoil hat, but wait till you hear this next one get out even more tinfoil. So it's been noticed that currently in Walmart and some other stores, specifically other stores that seem to use the Walmart radio music selection or whatever Walmart uses to play music in its stores, some other stores use the same tracks that the song Simple and Clean from Kingdom Hearts is currently playing on those tracks right now. This has been happening since September 26th. Now I know that it's insane to think Walmart playing Simple and Clean means Sora is coming to Smash Ultimate. However, stick with me here. It is true that cross-promotion is a very real thing. And cross-promotion is definitely something Disney marketing of all companies engages in. Maybe, just maybe, Disney decided to tell Walmart to add Simple and Clean to their current music selection as a marketing strategy. Again, I know it sounds crazy, but think about it without Smash Brother character speculation in mind. Let's say the DVD for Frozen just came out. Well, Disney might ask Walmart to add Let It Go to the music that plays in their stores. People walking around Walmart here, Let It Go, and they think, oh yeah, I gotta buy Frozen on DVD. This is legitimate marketing strategy from a big company like Disney. They do stuff like this. Now, okay, let's say for the sake of argument, Sora is revealed on October 5th. 
A few days later, you're in Walmart and you hear Simple and Clean playing and think, oh yeah, Sora just got in Smash. I should probably go pick up the Fighter Pass finally. I really wanted Sora. It's reaching its insanity level of speculation, and I'm happy to be able to engage in it one last time before Smash Ultimate is over. Anyone see Sakurai post a PS5 controller recently? It'll probably be a while before we're able to take these innocent posts from Sakurai and pretend they mean something for Smash. Alright, moving on. Way back in 2018, Shinji Hashimoto wrote, Yes, in response to a Sora in Smash mock-up image tweet. He deleted the tweet and assumedly he was just supporting the concept of Sora and Smash. I didn't realize how Smash fans would take his tweet. But hey, Steve took five years from negotiations to actually get in the game. So maybe Sora coming to Smash has been in the works for a long time and he was aware of it. Maybe he thought it actually got revealed back then. Speaking of Square employees, Nomura, the creator of Sora, has his birthday October 8th. That's next Friday. It would be quite the birthday present from Sakurai if Sora got revealed on the 5th, and then maybe the 8th could be when he actually shows up in the game. Although there is actually a slight pattern right now that maybe Challenger Pack 11 will be released to us on October 12th. But it is just a pattern. They don't always pan out. Also, if we're going to start speculating on numbers and dates and stuff, the next Smash update for the Final Fighter will be version 13. Organization 13, anyone? Alright, this Sora speculation is getting really, really out there. So is Sora going to show up on October 5th? Is the Disney music leak right? I don't know. Sora would certainly make for a great Final Smash Ultimate Fighter. He's been highly requested for a long time and is usually extremely high on Smash character request polls, if not the number one character. And he's popular in both the East and the West. Sora is also sort of an anime swordsman character, but also manages to be cartoony, kind of fills both of those sides of that coin. And he's from a series that could bring a lot of unique stuff to Smash. An amazing moveset potential, there's tons of unique ways you could tackle Sora's moveset and make it really unique. And of course, the music Sora could bring to Smash is god tier. Disney songs or not, with a limited soundtrack, even some Kingdom Hearts music getting in Smash would be incredible. I can't even take a stab at what his stage would be. Maybe Hollow Bastion? But I'd rather have a transforming stage that travels to lots of different Kingdom Hearts locations. Sora also has tons of alternate costume potential. Maybe a Roxas alt for half of his outfits or something? Or he could have his outfits from the different Kingdom Hearts games, like Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, and 3. Or he could even have some of his world-specific forms or world-specific keyblades. Check out some very cool Sora Smash renders here. I love this new one I saw on Twitter recently. Or maybe Sora could even have a new Keyblade specifically for Smash. Especially if they have to purge him of all the Disney references, they could add a little Smash symbol instead of the Mickey Mouse symbol. Or maybe they could have taken the time to give him a specific Keyblade for every single series in the game, and it changes mattering to what stage he's on. Kirby hat level of commitment there. Would he bring Disney stuff, or would he just be Kingdom Hearts original stuff? Either way, I'd be happy to get Sora in Smash. There's a lot of cool stuff Kingdom Hearts could bring. If there was ever a time to bend the rules and add some Disney stuff, the final character could be it. Disney has been in Smash before, actually, but only referenced in a very minor way. So is this leak real? Is it actually Sora that we're getting on October 5th? Only time will tell, but he'd be an amazing ending to an amazing game, so I'd certainly be very satisfied if the leak did turn out to be true in the end. But the honest truth is, we simply won't know until the 5th. Alright, so what else is happening in Smash Speculation? Well, we just got our last event before our final character reveal. Assumedly, there will be more of these events and spirit events and stuff for a bit after the final character, but here's the last event we have before the reveal of the last character. And it's wing-themed, so characters with wings. I can't think of any wing-specific characters that this could put a damper on before the end, but I guess if you were holding out hope for someone like Decidueye, it probably isn't them, or they would have held off this event. And if you're paying attention to these, it does mean we've made it all the way to the end, the final character, without a sword-themed event. Which is strange considering how many fighters use swords. So maybe the final fighter does use a sword. Or maybe the final fighter uses a blade. A Keyblade, perhaps. Yeah, Sora with a Blade-themed event, specifically for his Keyblade, would actually make a ton of sense as his event theme, and could be where the Blade tournament has been hiding all along. Alright, so I'll try to get off of Sora. Something non-Sora related also happened that's fairly interesting. We got a new image for Mario Party Superstars, and it has a new render for Daisy. 
What's interesting is that a while back we got a new Waluigi render, and many people thought maybe it went to Mario Party Superstars, but that doesn't seem to be the case. They're using an old Waluigi render here. While I seriously doubt they revealed Waluigi's Smash render early on accident somehow, Maybe this is simply a new Waluigi render created for no game in particular. But since we now know it wasn't for Mario Party Superstars, it's still a mystery what this Waluigi render was actually for. And I will say, as far as first party stuff goes, Waluigi is one of the few first party characters that would still make Smash Ultimate feel like it ended on a very high note if he was the final character. Or at least a very interesting note. Now as for third party characters, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, has an anniversary coming on October 12th. While Smash Fighters rarely coincide with the anniversaries of their games, Sakurai does like to tweet about anniversaries. I even theorized maybe one of the reasons we got the Heihachi Mi when we did was so that Sakurai had something Tekken in Smash so he could make an anniversary tweet for the series. Maybe the reason the Sakurai Presents is happening now is so that Phoenix Wright will be revealed before his anniversary and Sakurai can tweet about it. I was leaning towards Phoenix Wright being very likely, as we have yet to get a playable Capcom character at all during any of this DLC, yet there's lots of Capcom content in the DLC. And Phoenix seems to be next in line as far as Capcom characters that still seem possible go. But hey, maybe he'll just be a me costume, or not in the game at all. A me costume would also work for the anniversary thing. Speaking of Phoenix Wright and me costumes, we're getting a Phoenix Wright and Arthur Nendoroids. And also an Among Us Nendoroid. Anyway, before all this Sora leak stuff popped up, Phoenix Wright was the character I was leaning towards. That was my guess. But it was very much so just a guess. And hey, I'm not convinced of the Sora leak either, so we'll just have to wait and see who actually gets in. Another interesting thing to consider with the Smash reveal date being October 5th is League of Legends. League of Legends Worlds 2021 starts on October 5th, hours after the Sakurai Presents. Last year, Minecon happened shortly after the Sakurai Presents for Steve. So who knows, maybe that Ari leak from way back was actually right all along. If you want to get really out there with stuff that's lining up with the reveal date, October 5th is James Bond Day. Sakurai has mentioned James Bond before in regards to Smash, and GoldenEye 007 was a major N64 game. It was the couch co-op shooter of its time, and really pushed the entire genre forward and made it more mainstream. Obviously, Bond is a non-gaming character, and I highly doubt he'll happen as the final character. But the truth is, the 5th is James Bond Day, so the day does line up. Alright, so who will be revealed on the 5th? I have no idea, and I'm only going to speculate on what new stuff has come out for characters. Because if I spend time going back over all the speculation for every possible character I've been talking about for years now, this video will be super long and I likely won't even finish it in time for the fifth. And like I said towards the start of this video, anything I said about a fighter months ago or even years ago that's still on the table, it could still happen for them, I just can't mention it all again right at the end. It does seem like there are a few broad possibilities for how this could end, though. So instead of being super specific about characters, I'm going to just talk about general criteria. One major thing is first party or third party. What could we end on? Will the fighter fit a missing spot or complete some pattern or theory or something that was missing in the game? Something that we've been talking about for ages. And then what level of objective hype the final reveal could be. As for first party characters versus third party characters, I have absolutely no idea. I hope it's a third party character as they tend to be much more hype and would likely bring a brand new franchise into Smash. Whereas first party characters are generally seen as less hype and would probably be from an existing franchise. Most of Nintendo's big game series are already here. Although there are a few first party characters I'd be very happy to see, I know objectively they're just seen as less hype with a few minor exceptions. To be honest though, historically first party characters do tend to end off Smash Bros, but I think Smash Ultimate's finale could be a different story. And I could be very very wrong about that, but I feel like they'll have one more third party surprise for us at the end here. As for whether or not this final character will complete some missing thing or finish some theory, this tends to be the stuff us speculators get really caught up in, and maybe we'll look back on things after the fact with some questions as to why they did something or why something didn't happen. But I'm doubtful most of the patterns and theories will actually pan out in the end. 
We have some oddities, like why Porky isn't here in any form, or why no Shin Megami Tensei stuff is in Smash despite Persona being here, or why Rhythm Heaven almost got a rep in Smash 4, but didn't show up this time around when everything else on the Gametsu leak did. Why did Cuphead get a spirit event and Undertale didn't? Though personally I think it's a case of Cuphead being all about the artwork, while Undertale is just pixel art, so a spirit event wouldn't be as important for it, but that's besides the point. Well, we could definitely end on one of those seemingly missing or characters we've theorized about for sure, we won't be able to answer all of the weird oddities, fill in all of the missing gaps, and explain all the weirdness in Smash with just one more Final Fighter. So I'm unsure if any of the weird questions, theories, and patterns we have going in Smash Ultimate will actually pan out with The Last Fighter. Certainly, at least some questions and some oddities will remain in Smash Ultimate. The characters with lots of theories going for them tend to be the ones we talk about a lot. We're constantly scrounging for more evidence towards them actually happening in the end because we had something to go off of originally, some theory or something. Ryuhei Abusa and Doomguy have been at the forefront of DLC speculation talk since the start of DLC, but will either of them actually happen in the end? I don't know. I'd be very happy with either of them ending the game, though. But just because a character was talked about a lot during speculation doesn't mean they're actually going to end up panning out in the end. But we do have something fairly interesting going in favor of Doomslayer possibly being our last character. Over on Twitter, Smash Bros. JP wrote, and this is a Google translation, the last special program will be broadcast from 23 o'clock on October 5th, Tuesday, the day after tomorrow. There is one more fighter left for all 11 bullets. Who the hell are you? Please wait while expanding your imagination. Broadcast time is about 40 minutes. The delivery date will also be announced in the program. Now, this is almost certainly just an odd translation. I think the fact that it says bullets in hell is just a coincidence, but hey, it's there. And then the final question, will we get a hype final reveal? Or will it be something potentially disappointing for the final reveal? I'm using the Pokeball to represent the disappointing final reveal, not because I hate Pokemon or something, but I think most people think ending on a Pokemon would be a bit of a letdown. Plus, by using the Pokeball, I don't have to put down any specific character here. Now that said, hype is completely subjective. For example, Geno would be the most hype ending for me personally, but probably not the most hype ending for the vast majority of people out there. But I think we can look at who we've gotten already, and there are some characters that have overall very high levels of hype for the majority. For instance, most people didn't find Byleth very hype. I think Ridley, on the other hand, was objectively extremely hype. Most people were very hype that Ridley got in. I'm sure there's someone out there who loves Byleth and hates Ridley, but they're outside of the majority for sure. And some characters can still be very divisive, even if they're overall objectively very hype. Steve has his share of haters for sure, but he broke Twitter. I have to say, objectively, Steve getting in Smash and Minecraft getting in Smash was among the most hype moments of Smash Ultimate for that reason alone. Well, without knowing who the last character is, it's impossible to say if that last character will be hype or not. And while it's totally possible all of this ends on a disappointing note, I'm pretty hopeful right now they really have saved something big for the end. This is Smash Ultimate. It's had so many amazing moments, and I truly believe they plan to go out on a bang. So here's what I think is objectively the biggest characters left that they could end on. Sora, Crash Bandicoot, one of these Western shooter reps, Master Chief, Doomguy, or begrudgingly, Jonesy. I'm not a big fan of Fortnite, but if I'm being objective, the game is huge, and ending on Jonesy would be a hype ending for a large amount of people. So let's go over why each of these things are extremely hype and a possible showstopper ending, in my opinion. Sora I've talked about in length in this video, so I need not repeat why he'd be a major character to end on. Crash, of course, completes the Mario vs. Sonic vs. Crash, Nintendo vs. Sega vs. PlayStation, console wars mascots from the 90s. And frankly, in my opinion, that right there is the spirit of what Smash Bros. is all about. The mascots from great franchises in one game together battling it out. That's really the sole, the original purpose of Super Smash Bros. Crash represents that perfectly. And then we have the shooter reps, Master Chief, Doomguy, and Jonesy. Halo, Doom, and Fortnite. All different eras of shooters, but all extremely popular and definitive to the era and definitive to the genre. A genre that could sorely use more representation in Smash. Now, just because this lineup is what I consider the most hype possible choices they could go for at the end, 
That isn't to say something else wouldn't be hype. If it wasn't one of these, it wouldn't be hype. I'm not saying that. Phoenix Wright or Hayabusa, for instance, could be extremely hype endings, and I'd be totally satisfied and very happy getting a character like that, and I'd be excited to see what they could bring to the game. But still, I think this lineup are the showstoppers, the exclamation point at the end of Smash Ultimate, if there is one. These are the characters that are left they could dip into and end on one of the biggest moments for Smash Ultimate. With the Sora leak, and Sora being more of a Japanese character, I think Sora's at the forefront right now. But it's still possible one of these other characters could happen. Crash Bandicoot is celebrating his 25th anniversary and has had interesting stuff happening for the series all year long. Could it end on Crash getting in Smash? It might. Microsoft and Nintendo are extremely close. We got Banjo, we got Steve, we could end on Master Chief. And we have Bethesda stuff in Smash, so is Doomguy really off the table? And we have some odd comment from Donald Mustard about Fortnite and Smash, so yeah, they're all plausible. While I think Sora is the frontrunner right now out of all this, if any of these characters end up in Smash and Smash ends on that, I think everyone will have to agree it ended on an objectively high note. We will find out on the 5th who we actually get in this game, who this game's ending off on. I'm not holding out hope for characters beyond Challenger Pack 11, but maybe we'll get an answer to what that odd missing website page was actually about. Maybe an Echo Fighter situation could actually happen. They felt underutilized, and while Sakurai has said no fighters after Challenger Pack 11, since they don't actually number the Echoes like the other characters, maybe he wouldn't count them as additional fighters, and they wouldn't require a moveset explanation so they could easily be added during the event without taking up too much time. Maybe we could end with an Echo Fighter or even Echo Fighters actually happening here. Four more would totally fill out the roster after all. Whatever the case, and whoever we end on, whether it's a high note, really, really hype, or a disappointing ending, I'm going to enjoy being excited these next few days. Feel free to temper your expectations to avoid disappointment. That's smart. That's logical. But is it very fun? I'm going to go with fun here and get excited. This final reveal could be something amazing. One of the highlight moments of Smash Ultimate. We've had so many already. Let's hope for another one. If it isn't super hype at the end... Oh well, at least I enjoyed the end of speculation, and Smash Ultimate has had so many amazing moments already, a disappointing ending wouldn't be what I remember this game for anyway. And with that in mind, a huge thank you to Sakurai and the Smash team for such an amazing experience these last few years. Speculating characters has been absolutely amazing. And a huge thank you to everyone out there who came along for the ride with this channel speculating Smash characters for all of these years. Like I said, I'll make a final Smash speculation video afterwards, after the character reveal, but it won't actually have any speculation. It'll almost certainly be just a wrap-up video. And I hope you'll all stick around this channel for content after Smash Ultimate character speculation ends. Like I said, I might stream a bit these next few days so we can all just chat Smash speculation and bounce characters off of me, as making another whole video seems like a daunting task, and I'd rather just enjoy speculating with the Smash community at the end here. So feel free to join me for those streams. Anyway, if you guys have any thoughts or comments about any of the stuff I talked about in this video, leave them below. Remember to like the video, leave a comment in the section below, and subscribe to Papa Gino's a Twitter, a Patreon, a Discord.